Okay, this short video is to explain the differences between CSS position values of static, relative, absolute, and fixed. So what I've done here is I've created a code pen. It's got three divs. Each div has a paragraph inside of it. And a little bit of text here, you can see we're using CSS to extract the title property and write that out as the text inside the paragraph. When I scroll, all three divs just scroll up and down the page, they're positioned all together. In my CSS, I've stripped out all the padding and margin, and I've set the minimum height on the body to be 200% of the available space. The only reason I did that is just so that I have lots of space to scroll, so I can show the effect of these different properties. Each div you can see in the CSS is being set to the exact same width and height with the same padding on each one of the paragraphs. Inside the, uh, sorry, inside the div, so this space here and the space right here, this is the space inside the div and the paragraph is sitting inside of that. Here's the CSS with the paragraph tag. Uh, we're using the before pseudo class to create some content inside the paragraph and we're saying fetch the attribute title and that's gonna become the content. So in the paragraph, whatever the value of the title attribute is, that's what's being set as the content before this non-breaking space. Okay, now getting into the position properties. By default, every element that you put on a web page is going to be position static. And that means that it behaves just like this one does. Top to bottom, left to right, the entire page just flows in that direction. That is position static. Things will just sit on the page where you'd expect them to be, in the order that you write the HTML. If we change one of the elements, so say this first of the three paragraphs, the green one, if we were to, say, take this and change it, there we go, to position fixed, what that does is it removes this first paragraph from the page entirely the browser will then go and build the rest of the page, pretending that it doesn't exist, and then it comes back and it's placed on top. So, position fixed. It, right now, actually, is sitting on top of the second one. You'll notice right here, third paragraph. If I made this position static, which is the default, there we go, our second paragraph is sitting below the first one. We change it from static to absolute or fixed, it's removed from the screen, the rest of the page is built, and then it's placed back on top. Now, if it's absolute, it's going to keep these top and left coordinates. If we use fixed, it uses those coordinates when the page is first built, and then it keeps it on the screen in that same location. So, here we go, if I scroll, the second and third paragraphs are actually scrolling underneath that one. Now, that may sometime be the desirable effect that you want, position fixed, maybe for a nav menu. If you do, however, want to keep the other content on top of it, so you can see here my number two div, I'm using an HSLA background color with 50% alpha. So if it were to sit on top of this green, we would be able to see through and see the content there. So two ways to do this. One, I come into here and I set position relative on the second div. There it is, now it's sitting on top. The purple plus the green gives me this brown color. You can see all the text is sitting here. As I scroll, What's happening here is the first and second uh, divs are scrolling up as I move up and down, but this third one is still sitting below the first one. The third one is position static, which means just put it on the page. The second one, position relative, it was removed from the page, but the space that it originally would have occupied is kept open. 
So this third paragraph, the one sitting down here, is forced to start at this point because the space that was allotted for this second paragraph is held. So first paragraph is removed. Sorry, the first div is removed. It's position fixed, meaning no space is held. Div 2 and Div 3 slide up to occupy that space. Then Div 2 is removed from the screen, but a space is kept for it. And then Div 3 stays where it was. Div 2 and Div 1 are then put back onto the page in the order that they were originally built. So number 1 gets on first, number 2 gets on second just because they're being added back onto the page in the same order that they appear in the HTML. So if we were to make the third paragraph position relative as well, it means all three of them were removed and then put back on in the same order. So my third paragraph would scroll over top. There we go. So both the second and the third ones are scrolling over top of that first one. Now if I had six of them and I want them all to scroll over, I'd have to set them all to position relative or alternatively when you make something into position absolute, position fixed, position relative, we have an option of leaving them as is, coming into the, the element that's position fixed or absolute or relative, and giving it a z-index. So changing its stacking order from the way that the page wants to put it onto the page. z-index negative 1 means go behind whatever content is going to be occupying the same space. So I've commented out the position relative on divs 2 and 3. I've just added z-index negative 1 on the first one. And there we go, the same effect as having them both relative. But numbers 2 and 3 are just position static. They're doing what they would normally do. We just have this position fixed one, which is going to remain in the same space. So if I set the width to something bigger so we see it stick out, there it is, the green. Now I scroll past it. something is position relative, you can give, or give it a higher z-index. You can control all the z-indexes by just making things position relative, and then you can stack them in whatever order you want. The only other thing that's happening here is, with this first div, using position fixed instead of position absolute means that it's going to stay in this exact same spot on the page as we scroll up and down. And that's it. So you can use this code pen O, B, capital E, capital V, Q, capital M, and play around with that code and experiment with the position fixed, position absolute, position relative, position static, and the Z-index property. And you can move things up and down through the page.